Warning, this show contains adult language, so viewer and listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another edition of Up and In It. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's entirely dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. I kind of want to know what you guys want to think about, uh, what do you guys think about your own terms at the end instead of living life? Raw. Kind of like the raw thing. Uh, this is episode 218, My Personal Hard Time Survival Strategy. Uh, the recession, uh, all the, I think it's here, man. I think it's here and it's finally, uh, enveloping me. It's finally affecting me. So I am now with the rest of the people I, for a long time there, I was, you know, apart, uh, was unaffected and now things are happening. I'm in a chipper mood. Why would you ask? Um, well, I'm not exactly excited about having a, a loss of business and clients and money and being hit with this thing, but what I am excited about is being prepared and so thankful to my, my past self for doing what it did to give me this time right now to be able to have the clear space to think and function and go, what the hell am I going to do, right? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, the background noise, there is none. We're still in my F-350 7.3 liter diesel truck, uh, but I took the day off because there's no work. So we get to have some better quality. I hope that this recession and my downfall of this stuff is making better quality and helping you guys out. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a lot of stuff to cover over here. And I'm going to take the first thing off my list, which is uh, generate more business or hang back uh, as a question. What do I do? So I think a lot of you guys, I know we have listeners in other parts of the world. I'd love to hear what's going on. Uh, um, China there. Hey, Dean. Haven't heard from you. I hope everything's okay. Uh, we've got some listeners from New Zealand and all over the place. France, Germany, like, let, let me know. I'm just curious of what's going on. But at least here in the Americas, um, the recession is hitting, and I'm not quite sure uh, how or why other than the cost of materials has gone up. Um, this is actually May f uh, 3rd, I think, third day. Um and, well, first week of May. I always do that. That's for me anyways. I, I preload these podcasts because I have a very busy life, so I try to record them early. But what we have going on in my profession, which is construction, is the cost of lumber. A sheet of plywood that used to cost around, uh, you know, uh, $10 to $12 a sheet is now $60 a fucking sheet. Holy sheet. Holy sheet ship. Shit. Uh, this is insane. Uh, what we had is during the pandemic too, I think, is we had a lot of people that were stuck at home and there was a lot of things that they always put off, right? That's what we try to share and teach on the show is like to organize your life, run your life like a business. And I think people are so busy out there. They were um, at their jobs and things like that, that they were stuck at home sitting there looking at the wall going, oh, you know what? I'm so tired of this paint peeling. Uh, the kitchen looks like shit. The wife's, you know, I want a new bathroom, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or the guy who, who knows, you know, but regardless, they were, uh, People were fixing things. They were remodeling and spending a lot of money. I think a lot of the stimulus money that's come in, a lot of people were investing in their homes. Uh, for a lot of us regular folk, you know, we got what twelve hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, eighteen hundred dollars, whatever it was. Those are that's like chump change to me. You know, it's not really going to help you out. And it sure as hell ain't going to pay your rent in Sunnyside, Southern California, where the fucking prices are like. Uh, are we living in a house of gold? Huh? Is this the the Taj Mahal or something here? You know, what are you guys thinking? Um, but so a lot of people spent a lot of money. A lot of those rich people got huge grants for their businesses and things like that. And I know a few of them. We're talking thousands of dollars. Enough to like build half a pool and stuff like that, right? A big gazebo. And so a lot of the construction went wild. And then now I think it's starting to taper off. And I think a lot of people, uh, two ways or a few ways here, I think, is they're spending their money more on uh, uh, going out. Things are starting to open up. So they're like, let's go on a cruise. I'm stressed out. We've been locked in the house, you know. And so the move, the money is shifting and it's going around and it's not necessarily going to construction. A lot of these things, is this really what's going on? I have no idea. Um, I do study a lot of things. I'll see if I have some time to share with you guys where I get my information. But uh, going back on this, now what we have is the price of those materials just skyrocketing. And the reason why is because the COVID thing kind of uh, made some businesses get rid of some employees or have to shut down for a while. Uh, there's a limited amount of supply. We've had things like like millions of tons of, of potatoes just being dumped because the the uh, restaurants and stuff closed. So 
Uh, there was lots of meat. They were killing pigs and animals like chickens and stuff. They had to because the people who were raising it, uh, the, the goods didn't have a place to take it to, right? That's the, the, like the butchery, the, the, the slaughterhouses and stuff. They, a lot of people were getting COVID. They had to slow stuff down or completely shut down and it just disrupted everything. And that's why on this show, we want to start working more towards self-sufficiency and sustainability. And I think what I like is resiliency because we are dependent on this kind of thing here, this, this kind of system of chains. Study it for yourself and look at how there was a disruption in one, right? And then that leads to the next one. Then that leads to the next one. What am I talking about? Let's see if we can simplify this here. Let's just choose meat, right? So the beginning of the supply chain happened where uh, uh, people were buying a whole bunch of meat, right? There was a whole bunch. Everybody was stocking up. They were freaking out. So the meat companies were like, wow, we're just trying to keep up with demands here. Next thing you know, their employees start getting sick, right? The, uh, at the slaughterhouse. So the grocery store is selling all this meats. Next thing we know, uh, the production in the slaughterhouse slowed down. While people are buying a bunch of stuff, they bought out everything and, and you kind of saw a little lull in supply. Well, then we take it further. Who's supplying the live chickens to, uh, and it goes into delivery. Who's delivering those chickens to the slaughterhouses and maybe those truck drivers and all those, they got disrupted by COVID. Uh, and then we take it further back. I don't want to bore you guys with all these details, but now we have the people actually raising the food, right? And the supply chain shuts down and he says, hey, you've been feeding us a million chickens a day. We can't take that right now. We've got a bunch of chickens in this truck just sitting in the parking lot. Disgusting and sad, right? Disruption on all levels. Uh, ugly for life, ugly for money, ugly for everything. So, And then it goes into feed. Then we got the guys, you know, creating corn. They don't need the corn anymore. And then it go, you see how it keeps going back. So I uh, went on a good rant with that one. But what am I, let's go into what we have solutions. So right now with my business, uh, I've got no phone calls coming in. It's very, very slim. I, well, not none. I don't want to over exaggerate here, but it's like maybe one a day, maybe. Some days there's nothing. So what do I do? I started freaking out going, well, I need to generate more business. Let's pump more money. Uh, into advertising and start cleaning stuff up and getting stuff like getting more clients. And I sat, I had to look and say, well, if nobody has, very few people have money, then why would you spend more of your own money to get that money, right? This is a, like a whole business strategy thing here. And so I just looked and I says, you know what? This is probably the time to set back, to kick back for a while and let, and watch the shit show and see what's going on. I see this as a very dangerous time for people where that's what they're going to do is start spending money that they have now or maybe that they don't have hoping to generate. But we have to be smart enough to look and say, well, if I spent all this money, will it bring me more clients? We have everything stacked against us. You have the cost of materials skyrocketing right now. You have a lot of other people fighting for that business. Uh, your competition, uh, if you look around and you've got like 15, 20 contractors or people in the same profession as you, and they're all getting that one phone call. What do you think is going to happen? And then people are going to start lowering the prices, which is the wrong thing to do because then they're going to start hurting. Then as we talked about the supply chain, their workers are going to have to let go. Uh, are you thinking about the taxes that you're going to have to spend, that they're going to take over a third and then plus all the rules and regulations here in Sunnyside, California, you know? So you're going to do the job for half the price and make half the money. It's not even worth it to stay open. Uh, stick to your guns, I would say, is what I'm doing on mine. I may drop my prices down a little bit or offer different products that are lower costs instead of really high, good premium quality stuff. Would you like to you know, supplement that with something cheaper? So I think that it's time. I'm not quite sure, but I am, I am feeling very lovely and very, uh, and I wouldn't say gifted and blessed, all that kind of stuff. I worked my ass off to get to where I am, and that shit pisses me off when people say you're lucky. Uh-uh, I did not see you at 4.30 in the morning waking up with me drinking a cup of coffee, getting ready to, you know, throw a couple podcasts and get up and go to work and work in, you know, 14, 15 hour days and spending all this time designing my life and educating myself instead of watching puppy dogs fart on TV. That's why I'm in a situation that I am. Uh, there's so much more to it, but um, I would need to move forward. We don't have a lot of time here. Um, let's move forward to the next note, which is producing versus consuming. And I think that uh, that's my hard time survival strategy is it's been for a long time, uh, you know, for many, many years. So this is something very easy. I've already been practicing it and it saves me a, a boat ton of money. 
What are some of the things that I'm talking about? How to become a producer instead of a consumer. Uh, cleaners. I'm just going to give you guys a couple here. Do you realize how much, maybe you look and it's not that much. It's like 10 bucks, you know, maybe $15. I don't know. You buy yourself a, a big old bulk thing of Lysol or something like that, which is horrible for the fucking planet, by the way. Or why don't you go get yourself some peroxide, the uh, largest amount of peroxide you could buy, buy it in bulk, get it cheap. Get yourself some cheap vodka, the strongest vodka you can find. Get yourself some white vinegar, white distilled vinegar, and then order again in bulk. Get, get a gallon of vinegar. Order a big giant bottle of some lemon oil. And it doesn't matter. This one doesn't have to be organic or nothing like that. Uh, but you combine all these ingredients together with some water. And what you have now is a disinfectant that actually smells really good. Uh, you guys know what hydrogen peroxide does. Uh, you guys, hopefully, I don't know if you guys know what vinegar does. It kills a lot of the bad bacteria, but not all the, the uh, uh, good bacteria. Uh, same thing with when you use the vodka. It cleans, disinfects things. You can also accidentally spill some down your mouth when you're frustrated. You know, you had that bad fucking day where you're like, life sucks. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, oops, oop. <laughs> um, anyways, no, seriously. And test this out on, um, I don't have the time to go into complete details. Uh, but yeah, you, there's all kinds of mixtures and stuff. Uh, comment. Email me if you guys want to know what my ingredients are to make my own cleaners. But I'm making my own cleaners that the products I bought last me over a year. I'm making my own cleaners for pennies on the dollar, right? You guys look at how much you'd be spraying your toilets, your sinks, and your tabletops, and all that kind of stuff. And you're spending probably about $10, $15 a month. Oh, Adrian, that's not the big of a deal. We're adding, I'm talking about the philosophy. When you add this to everything that you're bringing into your life, $10 here, $20 there, $50 there, 100 bucks here. It all starts to compile, right? Uh, other things I do, which is really big, is I make my own meals. On Sundays, I do, that's my chore day. Saturdays is my fuck-off barbecue day where I mix a bunch of drinks, smoke some meats and stuff like that, and we just eat and be merry, dance, and me and my kids, and we just stay at home, and I just try to sleep in and do nothing. Uh, but Sundays is my meal prep day. And I've, I've shared a lot with you guys on the show how I just make simple oatmeal stuff that's good for the environment, uh, uh, good for me. It's super cheap. doesn't even really take refrigeration really if you didn't want to. I make my own smoothies. I make my own raw juices and stuff like that. And I, and I cook a lot. I make my own. I've, I've educated myself. So I make really, we eat really premium good food. I live a very simple life. For those of you who don't know, I live in a tiny house, a.k.a. travel trailer. Um, my rent is about a third of what most people spend, but I choose to spend my money on entertainment, like fun. Um, I choose my, to spend my money on on good foods, good good uh, uh, drinks and things like that, organic foods, and having the time to get exercise and stuff like that, and live a healthier life instead of spending money in a home that I'm always gone, that I spend more of my waking hours away from than I do even in it, right? Um, so yeah. Uh, some of the things I, I also do, I looked at is making like oat milk. It's so simple and it's really, really good. You can put, uh, um, agave syrup in it. YouTube, how to make your own oatmeal milk. I just bought some from Costco and it actually tastes really good. And it's like, what, 10 bucks for like six uh, quarts. And you can make this for pennies on the dollar. So start looking into things that you can do to produce instead of consuming. That's going to help your life out a lot. And you're going to take this philosophy and start applying it to large things. Um, investing in a side hustle and why. Um, I need to diversify. So I want to tell you guys what I've looked at. The price of materials has gone up. So for me to go and fight this and say, well, let's put more money towards advertising. And what can we do? Can we drop the prices down? The fact of the matter is I still have to buy materials and they're all rising. It's like every every two weeks or something, like everything gets padded on. And it's just going to continue. It's already in the forecast. By up to 10% by June, roofing materials are going to go up. 10%. That's a lot, guys. If you guys don't think that's a lot on a house uh, for materials, you're looking at $10,000, right? And if my math, my homeschool alert vocabulary teaches me right, uh, 10%, that's $1,000 more for a new roof. That's a lot of money. So what do I do? Um, because I've calmed the shit show down in my head, because I, I am not as stressed, um, you know, I do want to, to go on a side note spur here. Remember to look at your fucking notes. Instead of freaking out going, oh my God, we're all going to fucking die. You know, I started flipping out. Read your notes. I have plans. Look at your bank account. Look at your emergency funds. Notice that. Look at you're not like other other people. You're not going down. Don't get lazy. 
Don't, but don't freak out. Let's start looking at other things such as, uh, for me, I was sitting on the roof and I was really stressing out, forgot to look at my notes. Like I said, and, uh, know that, Hey, everything's okay. Just calm it down. And I'm looking up there and I just see all these solar panels everywhere on these roofs. And I said, I bet you those things need to be cleaned. I know I clean mine up on my vehicle. If you guys don't know, this truck has a solar panel uh, charging my, my uh, DC fridge. That's where I put all my food and everything I talked to you about. So I never really have to worry about refrigeration. I carry it with me. Um, but I started looking and I said, my God, yeah, it would probably take some soap or something. So I started doing some research, watching some YouTube videos and stuff like that, educating myself. And I said, wow, the, the best thing to wash solar panels is D, uh, DI water, deionized water. So you have these little filtration systems and you have this pump and you, you go to the customer's house, you hook up a water hose, it fills up the tank, about 100 gallons of this deionized water, and then you buy yourself this brush that spins, it's electric, there's many different types. While the water, deionized water is being pumped up to that brush, it's spinning and cleaning with no soap, no nothing. You just pass this thing over the solar panels. Uh, and what deionized water does is it doesn't leave, it takes out all the chlorine and all the calcium and stuff that, you know, when you wash your car, or it just kind of sticks. It makes this thing pristine and clean. And you can, you can probably clean about 20 uh, uh, solar panels in probably about 20 minutes, right? That's what they're saying. It takes longer to get there than even do the job. So uh, I started doing some research. Well, you can improve output by 10, anywhere from 5% to 30%. That's a lot. When you're paying electric bills here in Sunnyside, California, and I could tell, tell you that I would take, let's just go in the middle, like we'd save you 15% a year on your, your, your solar costs, your, your, your electric bill. That's a lot. Is that worth $150, $200, $300? Oh, uh, you betcha. So this is something that's in need, something that doesn't really have materials. It's just water. It needs to be done on the roof. And here's the kicker, guys. I am a licensed roofing contractor, fully insured, what we have is a competition out there. I know that some of you are probably already saying, that, yeah, well, what's competition? Yeah, there is there is competition. Not a whole lot in this arena. Uh, but you don't have to legally have a license to do these sort of things. So there's a lot of people just kind of doing it. Um, but I've got liability insurance. What's on a roof? Roofing tiles, shingles. Uh, there also could be a lot of damages from wind damage and things like that. So when somebody invites me uh, or employs, employs me to go do an estimate on their roof or to, to wash their solar panels, I can tell them I'm also a licensed professional roofing contractor that can repair anything that I damage, or I can bring myself in more work by videotaping what I find up there besides the solar panels, and it goes on, right? I can fix the chimney, the tiles. You got birds in there. We can bird net around the, the solar panels to keep the birds from coming in and pooping everywhere and things like that. So diversification, I think, is the key and uh, oh my goodness, we're, I'm always, I can't do these shows for 15 minutes. Oh my God, I hate jumping through them, but um, uh, let's go. Uh, I have on my notes here is expanding my education. And that's what I look at with taxes and things like that. Stuff we were talking about, advertising, getting on YouTube, going, well, if I do want to um, uh, expand these things, how do I learn about taxation, right? We're always being taxed. I think I, I want to do some premium quality uh, or, or premium extra footage of the shows like this that I probably put on Facebook, and it would be uh, uh, about certain things like this. And it would be, I'll give you guys some tips here of, uh, as far as further educating yourself when you're in downtime. A lot of you guys don't know that the taxation system is like a large portion, like 10, 20% of it is, is why you need to pay, pay taxes and tax codes, right, of what you have to do legally. The other whole part of it, which is huge, is how to not pay taxes. <laughs> That's what the rich know. How do I know this? I follow a lot of people such as Ken McElroy, uh, um, uh, what's his name, the 10X guy, uh, um, Grant Cardone, uh, um, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, place, things like this. I listen to a lot of stuff and what you guys would say, well, yeah, a lot of these dudes are into real estate. Yeah, but these people are understanding where the taxation is happening. Uh, where people, migration patterns and things like that. So not only will you learn, if you read between the lines, you're going to learn about where the money's at. And you'll learn about what the state of the economy is, what people are spending their money on. And you're also going to learn on how the rich and wealthy use the taxation system to not pay taxes. So those are things that I'm very interested in. Those are things I would love to share on the premium quality uh, area. In fact, today, you guys might want to join the Facebook group up and in it because I am posting some premium uh, uh, extra footage there. 
uh, on episode 208 on city steading, how to make more things happen in the city, how you can basically farm the city, how you can get wood chips and things for free, how you can utilize community and build uh, uh, a lot of equity, a lot of uh, things uh, uh, that are available that a lot of people don't see. So go check it out. It's episode 208. That'll be on Facebook uh, up and in it. That's a private page. But uh, go and ask to join. We, we approve everybody right off the bat. Uh, we just like to make sure that we can get rid of jerks when needed. So, well, that's the show, guys. If I brought you guys any value, please help me get the show off the ground. Subscribe, like, give me a review, give me a middle finger, give me a thumbs down, whatever. Uh, just let me know how I'm doing. If you guys want to hear uh, or ask me questions about anything I'm doing, it's up and in the show at gmail.com. Um, and I hope, I hope this really brought you guys some value. So listen, guys, if you, uh, like this sort of thing, check it out. It's up and in it on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and anywhere where I could do these podcasts. Um, and as I always say, guys, go out there and have yourself a near life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fucking fire. Human the fuck up. And I don't know why I have to swear so much. <laughs> it's just the way I talk, I guess. Uh, and live it, love it, own it, own it, my friends.